66 of Ben Thorne. Watch for him in that front wheel drive. Yeah, first ever GLTC race and a heck of a way to start things <laughs> off. Ben Thorne starting 15th, his best starting position in only his second round. So close to top 10, dude. Ben Thorne is leading a GLTC race in his first year of competition. Oh, does he have a problem? He's slow. No. Yeah, he's got a problem. Oh. Last season, this clip is what caused my car to get stuck in fifth gear and lose first place. So first order of business. All right, well, now that that clip is in, we're not gonna lose the shift cable. So we can actually get the car prepared for this season. Mark, what are you doing? Ben, have you ever thought about making this a real race car? Mark, I'm not sure if you've noticed, but I think this is a race car. I mean, real race cars don't have glass in them. Like, we could probably put Lexan to make it lighter, and then we can center the weight down lower. That's true, that's a good point. While we're at it, I think maybe we could do like a carbon roof? Absolutely not, absolutely not. You don't want to do that? No, no, Let, right. let's just do the glass. Okay. Get rid of that, that way we can lower the, the center of gravity. Okay, I'll take what I can get. All right, let's do it. The car currently weighs 2,609 pounds with me in it at the end of race fuel load. The crossway is obviously corner balanced perfectly, but the split between the weight on the left to the right is about 30 pounds of variance. We can get that weight even more balanced if we move some ballast weight around. The problem is we can only add so much ballast weight without making the car heavier and thus slower. So I have purchased some Lexan windows. Technically it is a polycarbonate hard coated mar resistant plastic. It's a race approved plastic. Basically if you just throw anything in there, um, like a regular plastic, it can splinter and cut your head off in an accident. So you don't want that. You definitely want to make sure it's something that is meant for race cars and it is really thick. Some people will go for the really thin ones because it's lighter, but there is some safety you know, issues with that. So I actually went with the thickest possible option. This is still substantially lighter than glass, so it should take off a lot of weight off the top of the car. Um, Mark, what are you doing? You're gonna break it, dude. No, <laughs> I'm not. It's, it's frail. It, it, it's polycarbonate, okay, like it, well, it's fine. So we have these two side pieces and obviously the big boy, the, the back rear glass. As far as the driver's side and passenger side door, I don't think we need to do anything with that. I actually removed it since grid life rules require no windows. Um, but we'll just use the Lexan to kind of set in there as an insert. Um, yeah. But yeah, so it's really only three pieces of glass. So it might not be actually huge gains by any means. Yeah, but um, I mean, every little bit counts, right? Every I mean, little bit does count, for sure. We're at that point, five years of refinement on this car, um, for sure. Uh, but Mark, you, you'll notice that there's two of the exact same sized glass, which makes me think, boy, we could have a real good competition here if you want to see who can remove the stock glass faster. Left side, right side, you remove one, I remove the other, so you can so remove it faster. So essentially you want to lose. No, Mark, I don't, I don't know if you know this or not, but I don't lose. Uh, you definitely lose. No, 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 no. I mean, you no. lost to trivia, you All right. lost at grid life. You're up first, go for it, bud. And yes, Mark. I do yeah, have you going yeah, yeah. first. Exactly. You have more so, experience so, with this. So you can watch me do exactly, this. Exactly, yes. And try to do it faster. Yes. Ready, set, go. Get out of the way. Mark, that's five minutes. You've just passed the five minute mark. <laughs> five minute mark. <laughs> All right, 16.24. That's where it was. What is Wait, on whoa. that corner? Never mind. What's going on in that corner? Nothing. Well, you're not gonna help me out? Nope. <laughs> I'll hold the glass for you. All right, well, I accept the challenge. I think, uh, I think I'll lose. You think, you think I'll lose? <laughs> <laughs> hmm, we'll find out. Yeah, so I am, I am noticing on this side, Mark, that the driver's side seat is a little bit in the way and I got a window net. And you did let Just, me go first, you know. And yeah, and you used all of the wire. That's not true. You Look still, how much you is still left. Got, uh, you got a little bit left. 
All right, I'm ready. But you, you saw the process. Yep. So, I mean, yep. there I'll should be no excuse. 16, 23. Ooh, 23. One second. One second faster than you. All right, you ready? I'm ready. Go. Why am I doing this without this, with a string first, huh? I, I don't know. Mangled wire I gotta work with here. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna put some like safety glasses on just in case you shatter this that thing. That is probably a good idea. <laughs> Get this through. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, I know. I got yeah, it. That, you know what? I think you just went through the thickest part of the urine. <laughs> I'm just taking everything I need. Just so your needle nose is right there on the counter. Oh, this isn't needle nose. <laughs> five minutes. It's been five minutes, and he just started cutting. Uh, it's been five minutes. No, it hasn't. Get out of here. All right, time, time. 18.06. I mean, that's, that's still pretty good. I'm, I'm actually really happy with that. Yeah, it's still really good. <laughs> Dude, I am so impressed at how strong you are. Right here is burning on both arms. Oh my gosh. Whoa, 18 minutes. Not bad for, this is literally no. the second time I've ever removed glass, so. Yeah. Which, yeah, <laughs> I've removed glass more times than that. The winner, since you're so good at removing glass, you get to remove the big rear glass. You know, that's kind of usually how it goes. When, <laughs> when, when somebody's good at something, they're always yeah, like yeah, selected yeah, yeah. to do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Do some more work and you don't get erased. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I guess I might as well just go ahead and do the carbon roof too, because you know, I'm just so good, on, yeah, good at offering? that. Yeah, you're offering? I think not. I think <laughs> oh, okay. Not. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. I, uh, we can compromise. I think we can do the rear glass together. I wish I could get rid of this because this is metal. <sighs> More dead weight. I don't know what these are still doing in there. <sighs> Not gonna lie, that's pretty heavy. Now we're ready to put the polycarbonate windows in the Civic. We're gonna be using what is recommended to us, which is a marine grade polyurethane. It should adhere to just about anything, and in this case, polycarbonate to the body of the car. You kinda don't wanna, you know, your window flying off, going 100 miles an hour down, you know, the back straight of any kind of racetrack. So you kinda want it to stick to that, and uh, we were recommended to use this so let's uh, go ahead and lay some beads down and get this thing dried up. I'm pretty shocked, this looks pretty good. And we're gonna leave this like blue film on for now because we didn't want to scratch it. I'm stoked because we've just shaved off 15 pounds off like the top half of the car and on the back half of the car. So that's huge. We're gonna let that dry before I put the wing and stuff back on. So the car's gonna look derpy for a little bit longer. Um, and also- At least 24 hours. At least 24, maybe, maybe we'll wait longer. But uh, Mark, thank you for your service. You're welcome. <laughs> I'll see you some other time. Yeah, Mark is gonna go work on Ben's car and I'm gonna continue working on this car to shave even more weight. Last year, we removed what was left of the factory interior. 
except for the dash. I still have the OEM dash that we flocked and modified for all of our switches, and it looks good. But I think we can shave even more weight with an aluminum dash. This is 8.6 pounds, and it's for an Acura Integra because I couldn't find one for a Honda Civic. But hopefully it fits, and hopefully it's lighter. I don't actually know, because this dash is already kind of stripped down. It might actually be lighter than this one. So we'll find out. pretty light, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> 192, that's eight pounds heavier. This is eight pounds heavier. We just shaved another eight pounds. Doesn't feel like it, wow. To save even more weight, we're gonna get rid of this rusty dash support. Only problem is that it also holds up the steering column. So I had Andrew Hicks come by to work his magic. All right, so today we're gonna get rid of all this wonderful Honda rust metal, tetanus infused. We're gonna build him a box that'll serve two purposes. It'll support this steering column, keeping the same line that he has with the OEM frame that's in here. Um, just support it off this bar instead of being bolted in halfway, I guess, to the side of the chassis. He's gonna need another secondary mounting point for the dash that he's putting in, and then he needs to build off of that for his aim gauge cluster. This is 14.2 pounds, so definitely want to get rid of this. And it's on the left side of the car, which is the side of the car that's already too heavy because I'm sitting over there when we're racing. So we're trying to make the right side of the car heavier and the left side lighter. So this is a good step towards that. My steering wheel still needs somewhere to mount. So we'll leave the factory mounting there, but just weld it to the roll cage bar. So that's, yeah, nine, nine pounds off. Plus we gotta make a bracket to obviously connect it up now. But yeah, okay, sweet. Beautiful. Honestly, that's definitely the strongest way to put that in there. Like there's no way that's gonna go anywhere. This new dash looks fantastic, and we ended up shaving off 14.8 more pounds. All right, we have one more weight reduction thing to do, and that is the rear crash bar. And I removed this rear crash bar in the past when I was in Club TR, just in time attack, but I've obviously put it back since I'm doing wheel to wheel racing, and occasionally you do get bumped. So you wanna have a crash bar or some sort of crash structure back here, um, but the OEM crash bar is really heavy. And thankfully, there's a guy who makes a lighter, but still race prepped crash bar. And this thing is much lighter than OEM and it should actually fit the curvature of the bumper better than the OEM bar. And it is still strong enough to take impacts in racing. We're gonna throw this thing in there, see how much more weight we can lose. My F1 FIA certified rain light is bent in a little bit right here. It actually looks like it bent in the crash bar tad too. I can thank Matt Walbaum for that. At the last lap of my Laguna race, he didn't know I was stuck in fifth gear coming out of a corner and he just, boom, <laughs> right into the back of this thing. So 
I am making a bracket that's gonna go on the spare tire well here to hold the rain light so it'll sit a little bit behind the crash bar. So if I get bumped again, it'll protect the rain light from having any issues and we can just carry on. Okay, well, that was a lot of labor work for honestly not that big of a return. It is pretty small when we're looking at it. We shaved 35 pounds off of the car, which that's not nothing, but in the grand scheme of things, not a big change as far as like perceptible lap time, but it does help give us even more flexibility to move the weight around and get the car more balanced and also gives us more flexibility to take weight out. If we go to a track that's a more cornering centric track that we want the car to be lighter for, we now can remove more ballast weight to get the car even lighter. And then if we go to a, you know, a straight line track or something like that, where we need to put a bunch of weight in it, we can do that as well. But ergonomically, there's a lot more room in here. It's a lot easier to work on. It also gives me a little bit more sight line because that dash is a little bit lower. And I think all in all, it looks pretty good. And there is one more thing that I forgot to do. And that is Whew. I'm not going to lie. That's a good look. It had tinted windows on it previously, but now that it's clear, you can really see the cage, the white in there. Except unfortunately, we're no longer sponsored by Advanced Auto Parts. So maybe it's time for a new livery. New year, new livery. Subscribe so you can see what we do. at cold, wet, and rainy Virginia International Raceway for our testing of the Civic. It is actually an ideal testing weekend because it's raining, which means we can test our rain setup, which I haven't yet done since Watkins Glen last year, and that went pretty poorly. So now I have some rain tires, some Continental uh, Extreme Contact Sport O2s. So we're gonna run those, which should be way better in the rain, but we'll start off with the, uh, the dry setup first just to have some comparison data. And then tomorrow it should be dry. So we'll be able to actually get the car out there for some proper lap times. And we can test between a heavy car with higher horsepower versus a light car with low horsepower. I couldn't ask for a better test event, even though it sucks being out here in the rain, it's perfect for testing. So let's get this thing out here and uh, start to get some lap times. Well, I have a fogging problem. My front windshield seems to be fogging up. Uh, that would happen when you remove your defrost. So <laughs> they make aftermarket stuff that I can just kind of bolt right onto the top of the aluminum dash. Um, so that's now on my list in my shopping cart. And uh, going forward, we're changing tires to the Continental Extreme Contact Sport O2s, which are the rain tire. These tires are so much faster in the wet than the Falcons that I was running, which are definitely a dry tire. So. We'll see how much difference. Unfortunately, I didn't really get a good baseline lap, but we still have my data from last year, which is a 245. So if I can go faster than a 245 on these Continentals, we know that the Continentals are definitely better than the Falcon, but also I'll just be able to feel it out a lot more. Okay, rain test was a success. I feel a lot more confident with these tires and they're very clearly faster than the other tires. I went four seconds faster with more weight added to the car and less horsepower. So definitely an improvement. Now we move on to tomorrow where it won't be raining and actually get some dry testing in, which is really what obviously everybody wants to see how fast this thing will go. It's day two. The rain is gone and the sun is out, so I'm feeling really confident about going fast today. A problem that I had all of last year was getting my tires warm enough on the outlap because there's only one lap before the race starts, and it's obviously a front-wheel drive car, which means my rear tires can never really seem to get up to temperature quickly. So I think now is the time to try a new technique to try to warm up those rear tires.
All right, first session in the books. We only got one real flying lap just because of incidents and in, in traffic, but we got one good run and I think I got full power down the back straight so I have power to compare with with our next session where we're gonna reduce the horsepower but also take out some weight. So we have the data that we need. It did feel very slow. I mean, I only ran like a 217 or something, but the whole lap, I had traffic in that lap, so it's kind of tough to tell based on lap time. But we'll pull the data, take a look at the max speed, and we'll be able to compare that with the low horsepower setup that we're gonna run next and go from there. So I'm gonna uncork it now. We've done our test between both power setups. I'm gonna look over the data a lot more once I get home, but now I'm gonna uncork it. So I'm gonna take 50 more pounds out of the car and change the tune from 203 to 230. So we should go significantly faster now. My best time from last year was a 208.9, so that's the target. If we can beat a 208.9, then uh, I will be happy because that means the car is faster than it's ever been. Well, it turns out when you add horsepower to your car, you go faster, who knew? Um, the car is a full one second faster than it was last year on the uncorked setup. So I would say that's a massive success. That means we have gotten the car one second faster per lap over last year. That's the same power that I ran last year. So we got that data. We also have the data that I can go back home now and look at between the different weight setups and the, the lower horsepower setups. So we've got, we've got information that I can use to figure out what further mods that I need to make. But as far as a baseline to start the year off, we're already one second faster than we were last year, which is good news. That means we're not gonna start in 24th or wherever I started last year. We should start in the top 10. I call that a victory. Probably because of the Lexan windows. Probably. Maybe it's because of the dash. <laughs>